Hey guys, it's David with WCS. Um, this is going to be a first part of a two part video um, on cage traps. The first part here I'm going to go over some terminology and different styles of cage traps. And then in the second part I'm going to give some tips and tricks on how to set it, uh, trap and some of the accessories. Um, so to start off with, our first thing, this is a cage trap and this is a box trap. The main difference being box trap is solid in nature versus a cage trap that is made out of wire mesh. Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages to both, but it's going to be up to kind of your preference a lot of it as to what kind you want to use. Um, there's going to be probably more features in a cage trap than you'll see in a box trap. We'll go over them in a second. Um, when you're looking at cage traps, the first thing you're probably going to look at is the size. Of the trap so for instance this is a seven by seven trap so it's seven inches here and it's roughly I think it's by 30 um, this one particularly uh, so that'd be the first thing so just remember that you don't want to buy a trap that's suitable for the animal that you are trapping um, this especially applies to squirrels because a squirrel and a big trap you're basically giving it a death sentence um, because it'll run back and forth. The next thing you're going to look at probably is the size of your wire mesh and the gauge of it. So this is half by one. Um, traps vary depending on the trap. Anything from a half by half inch square all the way up to greater than an inch by inch square. Square. Some even have welded rods depending on the size, especially when you get into the bigger traps. The um, gauge of the wire will be the next thing. So basically the no, lower number there means a thicker wire. And a thicker wire means generally means a sturdier, stronger trap. Um, but your price also goes up. The next thing you'll probably look at is whether it's one door or two doors. Or if it has a slide release door and one door. Um, it all depends on your situation and what what you want. Um, a one door trap will catch animals just fine. Saying it's a two door trap and saying it's a one door for slide release. Um, when you want a walk through type of situation, um, this applies a lot to groundhogs. You'll probably want a two door trap with a cover. Um, so basically, um, the next thing will be. Uh, what kind of trigger you want so um, where you want a pan trigger or a swing panel a pan trigger is basically 95% of the traps you see out there there's a pan on the bottom of the trap that they have to step on to depress or hit with their nose to depress depending on what the animal is doing and as soon as it depresses it releases the doors and catches the animal the other style is a swing panel and I don't know how well you can see it in there um, but you can see that there's uh, wires being stretched across it. They're kind of moving back and forth there. The animal will walk through it to set the trap off instead of having to depress a pan. Um, again, it depends on the situation, your preference, and what you want to use. The um, next part will be uh, that I was talking about before, whether you want a slide release door. Um, a slide release door, basically all it is is a, the back of the trap, instead of having a solid piece of wire mesh that's attached directly, it has a removable door that slides up, just like that, you can see it there. Um, a lot of people like these because it makes it easier to release the animal, and it allows um, you to butt a transfer cage up to the back of this trap where you can transfer animal from this cage into your transfer cage and then you can put this trap back in use quicker. Um, and the final thing that you'll see for features is uh, for the main features I should say is the nose cone. Um, this nose cone is basically all it is is an extension of the trap there it comes up 
and it lets you to positively set the trap. So this trap usually would end here, but they extended it for you can positively set it. The animal forces the animal up and through the trap. It doesn't work in all situations because sometimes the animal won't want to go through the trap no matter what you do. So just remember that. Um, as far as other features that differentiate uh, are a standard series trap versus a professional series trap is um, just basically the durability of it. So for instance, this is a tomahawk trap, professional series. You'll have more rings here to help protect that bar from bending. You're going to have a um, pan protector here that runs across the length of the pan for it's harder to bend. You'll get um, extra um, locks to do with the doors. For instance, on this trap, we have this additional lock here that um, when it's down, you can't open the trap. So you have, it's kind of like a, a two-step process. You have to lift this up, depress it, and then open it. So it's just something to keep in mind and look for when you're buying traps if you're worried about that extra protection. The one thing I didn't mention about wire mesh size is um, the tighter your wire mesh, the less chance an animal is going to have to reach through the trap to get to your um, bait, so it'll be more apt to go through the end. The other thing does is protects the stuff that's around the trap from the animal from reaching out. So if he's in this trap, you'll see raccoons will dig up underneath the trap. Well, if it's a tighter mesh size, they have a harder time doing that. So it's going to protect your lawn or your roof if you're a company who has a trap up on the roof somewhere. Um, so just think about that as well. The other style trap I mentioned earlier was a box trap. A box trap, like I mentioned, is solid in nature. So this is a plastic trap. Usually they're made of some type of plastic. Um, this is a tomahawk plastic trap catch. It's the one that we recommend to anybody who's just starting out trying to catch animals. Um, they offer some benefits. For instance, if you catch a skunk on here, I can go up to it and move it around and handle the animal without, basically without having to worry about it spraying. Um, there's always a chance of it spraying, but that's kind of um, up to the temperament of the animal and the person handling it. So if you go up to it and you shake it, you're going to get probably sprayed. Um, the other thing they do is it protects the animal from the elements and it also keeps them out of the public's view. Um, we're always big on keeping trapped animals out of the public view because as soon as it's in the public's view, you always have people asking questions and you always get people grouping around the animal because they want to see it and they're stressing out the animal. So just remember that um, as well. A lot of these cage traps you can buy aftermarket covers for them, not, not aftermarket, like Tomahawk makes covers for them, but um, they're usually sold separate. The other thing um, with these traps, there is no potential of them stealing your bait through it because they can't physically get to it and so forth. Um, the other thing too, in regards to cage traps I want to talk about is monitoring them. They do, like, I'm from Ontario, so we have to check them once a day. Um, look up your local laws see what you have to do because it varies from place to place um, on hot days I would recommend checking any cage trap um, probably more than once just because it's, your animals going to be stressing especially if it's caught say you checked it at 6 in the morning it wasn't there but it was caught at 7 well a 38 degree day in the sun that can really stress an animal out. So just remember that too. The other thing is um, make sure you have a game plan as to where or what you're going to do with the animal after it's caught. Um, that's the other thing. You, I know here in Ontario it's basically one kilometer. You're allowed to transfer it. Um, that's MNR policy, MRF policy. So um, here, but again, check your local things and you generally you need permission for where you're going to release it. 
um, if that's your plan. So just remember there's a lot of other things that go along with just putting out a cage trap or a box trap um, in regards to the animal's health and what your plan is after the fact. Um, like I said, next week I'm going to go over basically how to set a trap, um, the basis of it. I'm not, it's going to be here again, I'm not, I'm not going outside or anything like that. It's going to be inside the store here and um, I have to go over where to place your bait and so forth. So stay tuned for that. Um, you can check out these traps and other ones at our store website at wcscandastore.com. Um, we're going to be trying to do one video a week, so um, if you like if you like this video, subscribe, like it, and uh, we'll keep on producing stuff. If you have anything else you want to see regarding cage traps, um, just put it in the comment section below, and I'll see what I can do. Um, we'll be doing next week's video next week, so that's just uh, if I see something that a lot of people are uh, wanting to see, then I'll I'll try and make it happen. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, like I said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Bye.